All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be solving the equation five to the power of x is equal to 50. So to first start with this problem, let's test different values of x. So if x is one, then I get five to the power of one, which is equal to five, and this is too low. Now if, it's, if x equals two, I get five to the power of two, which is 25, and this again is too low. Now if x equals three, then I have five to the power of three, which is 125, and this is way too high. So we know that the value of x is gonna be somewhere in between two and three, meaning it's gonna be a decimal. So how are we gonna find the exact value of x? Well, to start, we're gonna be using logarithms. So I'm gonna take the log on both sides, so I get log phi to the power of x is equal to log 50. And the reason I'm doing this is because logarithms come with a special property that state that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move the exponent b to the front, so this turns into b times log a. So in this case, I have log phi to the power of x, and we can think of x as b, and I can move this x to the front. So now, I get x times log five is equal to log 50. And now remember, we wanna find the value of x, so all we have to do to do that is to get rid of this log five by dividing both sides by log five. So now these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to log 50 over log 5. And now, let's simplify this a little to get the exact decimal value. So log 50 is the same thing as log of 10 times 5. And another property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form log of a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. So now this turns into log 10 plus log 5 over log 5, which is the same thing as log 10 over log 5 plus log five over log five, which is just one. And log 10 is also equal to one. So I get x equals one over log five plus one. So now all that's left to do is do one divided by log five in my calculator. So I get x is equal to 1.431 one plus one which is equal to 2.431. So this is my answer. All right, so on this problem, I have seven to the power of x is equal to seven. So to solve this, I'm gonna first start by dividing both sides by seven. So then 70 divided by seven is 10. So I have seven to the power of x over seven is equal to 10. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So seven to the power of x over seven, seven is the same thing as seven to the power of one. So I have seven to the power of x over seven to the power of one and that's gonna equal seven to the power of x minus seven to the power of one, or sorry, seven to the power of x minus one, which is equal to 10. Now I'm gonna take the log on both sides. So I get log of seven to the power of x minus one is equal to log of 10. And if I have something in the form log 
a to the power of b, I can move this x1 and b to the front. So it's going to equal b times log a. So in this case, I have log 7 to the power of x minus 1, and I can move x minus 1 to the front. So now I have x minus 1 times log 7 is equal to log 10. Now we want to isolate x, so I'm going to divide both sides by log 7. So when these two cancel out, and I get x minus 1 is equal to log 10 over log 7. Now log 10, that's the same thing as 1, so I have x minus 1 is equal to 1 over log 7, and now I can add 1 on both sides. So I get x is equal to 1 over log 7 plus 1. Now, log 7 that's equal to 0 0.845. So now I have 1 divided by log 7, and that's going to equal 1.183. So I have 1.183 plus 1, which is equal to 2.183. Alright, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 8 minus 121 is equal to 0. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by rewriting x to the power of 8 as x to the power of 4 times 2. Now I have this minus 121, which is the same thing as 11 squared. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 4 times 2, that's going to equal x to the power of 4 to the power of 2. Now this minus 11 squared is equal to 0. Now if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, this is going to equal x to the power of 4 plus 11 times x to the power of 4 minus 11 is equal to 0. Now this is going to equal x to the power of 4 plus 11 equals 0, and x to the power of 4 minus 11 equals 0. So for x to the power of 4 plus 11 equals 0, I subtract 11 on both sides, and I get x to the power of 4 is equal to negative 11. And for x to the power of 4 minus 11 equals 0, I can add 11 on both sides, I get x to the power of 4 is equal to 11. Now, to solve this, this is the same thing as x squared to the power of 2 is equal to negative square root of 11 squared. And now this means that x squared to the power of 2, sorry, this is, this actually has no solution because I have a number to the power, to the power of a positive x, or sorry, to the power of an even number, x1 equaling a negative number. So this is wrong. x to the power of 4 is equal to 11. For this, I can rewrite this as x squared to the power of 2 is equal to the square root of 11 squared. And now I'm going to subtract the square root of 11 squared on both sides. And now I get x squared to the power of 2 minus square root of 11 squared is equal to 0. And this means that x squared plus the square root of 11 times x squared minus the square root of 11 is equal to 0, meaning I have x squared is equal to the square root of 11, 
and x squared is equal to negative square root of 11. For x squared equals square root of 11, x is equal to the fourth root of 11. And this has no solution. So this is my only solution to this problem. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 3 minus x squared is equal to 4. So I'm going to start by subtracting 4 on both sides. So when these two cancel out, and I get x to the power of 3 minus x squared is equal to negative 4. Now, I'm going to, sorry, I did this wrong. I'm supposed to have x to the power of 3 minus x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. So now, to actually solve this, I need to find one solution of x, and then using that solution, I'm going to find the rest. So to do that, I'm just going to plug in values of x until I get a solution. So for x1, that's not going to work. For x equals 2, I get 8 minus 4 minus 4, and this is equal to a 0. So x equals 2 is a solution. So now using x equals 2, I can divide it with this. So I have x to the power of 3 minus x squared minus 4 divided by x minus 2. And then this results in x squared plus x plus 2. So I get x minus 2 times x squared plus x plus 2 is equal to x to the power of 3 minus x squared minus 4. And remember, that's equal to 0. So I have this is equal to 0. So now to solve this, I get two equations. I get x minus 2 is equal to 0, and I get x squared plus x plus 2 is equal to 0. So for x minus 2 equals 0, x is obviously equal to 2. That's a simple equation. And now for x squared plus x plus 2 equals 0, I'm going to use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is 1, and c is 2. So I get x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times 1 times 2, all over 2a. And now this is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 8, which is negative 9, or sorry, negative 7. Now I have this over 2, and this is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 7i over 2. So these are my three solutions.